Hello, thank you for welcoming here in, in Berlin. So I'm Rafi, I'm one of the co-founders of Violet. So what is uh, Violet, to cut the, sh the story short, a few years ago, in 2005, we launched this thing, Navistag, the very first internet-connected rabbit. Uh, what is an internet-connected rabbit? Well, so Navistag is basically uh, an ambient device where so it displays information in, uh, in, with speech, ear movements, colored lights, etc. But the main reason why we did this uh, wacky thing, I mean, why did you need an, an internet-connected rabbit, was mainly to, to make a statement that if you can even connect rabbits, then you can connect anything. So the purpose of, of Violet is to show that there is a life after the PC and the mobile phone, and that soon any kind of object can be turned into a connected device or a, uh, an information tool, and that information can become contextual to objects. So when we did Navistag, people kept asking us, OK, what's next? You did the rabbit. What are you going to do next? Are you going to make the connected mangoes or the, or the connected mushroom? So we have a very basic strategy, two-step strategy. Step one, connect rabbits. <laughs> Step two, connect everything else. So since we have completed step one, now we're moving forward to step two. <laughs> but why? I mean, why do we believe to, uh, of the ines inescapability of the Internet of Things? There are billions of reasons why you can we believe for the, of the Internet of Things. I, I just chose one at random, what we call escaping the data fishbowl. What we have today is data information services that are like fishes in a fishbowl and they are trapped into the water. There is no way you can take them out of their context. You need to go there sitting in front of your fishbowl to watch the information. And you live in, the, in an environment where all the data is concentrated in a certain uh, point of, in space, and the remaining stuff in your environment are dumb, unconnected, and, and unpersonalized. So what we imagine is a way or ways to, to have information spreading out all the way, going into every kind of object you are, uh, you are touching and dealing with, and not having it concentrated in a certain places in, in place. So this is why we're launching our second product, which is called the Mirror. I have one here. Uh, so what is the, the, the Mirror? The Mirror is simply the first mass market RFID reader. It's a very simple device. It connects through USB to your PC. And when you show it anything, it will get through your PC to our platform that will do something. So what are the kind of things you can use with a, with a mirror? You can use already RFID-enabled uh, uh, objects, like if you are living in London, you have an Oyster transportation card, you show it to your mirror, you will get whatever you want, like uh, transportation. Uh, the traffic conditions or stuff. Uh, you can ha buy uh, RFID stamps, stick them on your own objects, and decide what this is going to trigger. Like you put them on a medicine box, and when you show them to the mirror, it will remind you when was the last time you used this box. Or buy already a sta uh, stamped objects, like what we are doing with, with uh, children books publishers. And when you are going to show the book, for instance, to the mirror, it's going to read you the, the, the story. Doing or programming a stamp is very easy. You go to the website, you choose among application, uh, you attach them to the stamp, and the next time you show your, like, your umbrella to your mirror, it's going to give you the weather forecast in, through a big picture and read you the Guardian uh, through speech. So this is very important because it's not about just having objects triggering and opening like web pages. Because if you are doing that, you're just doing a book of any physical object, a bookmark. What you have to, to, to imagine from a design perspective is a user that is standing in front of his PC with his umbrella on hand on his way out of home. So we are just using the PC as a display device, but not, so, so it's the PC which is the peripheral to the, the, the to the, to the mirror and not the mirror, which is the peripheral to the, to the PC. So you need to, to imagine new ways of displaying the information and not just basically opening web pages. You can do this kind of programmation with, uh, with any kind of objects you have. The second important thing is that the object is centric. 
uh, the, when you show your umbrella to your, uh, to your PC, it will give you the weather forecast. If you show it to someone else's PC with a, with a mirror, it will give you the same information. So the information is not attached to the device or to the PC, but uh, handled by the object itself. And if you show it to your Nabis tag, who, who already also have an RFID tag reader, he will give you the information as well. So all the data is stored in a, uh, uh, on the platform and pushed to the object you are meeting on your way so that the, input, the, the applications are related to the object, not to the device. So what are the kind of things you can do with a, with a stamp and with a, with a mirror? Well, to give you a few examples very quickly, uh, you can obviously launch files from your PC. That's an easy one. You show your folder and it opens the related Excel file or whatever on your PC. You can uh, show him, you can launch anything that comes through the internet, show you an action figure, and it launches a video or images or, or games uh, or widgets. You can send information outside, so you can have your uh, children keychain sending emails to, uh, at, uh, at the office saying that he's back home. You can post things on social networks. You can have your mug posting automatically to your Facebook status that you are having a coffee break. <laughs> So, uh, and basically whatever you like. So, I mean, you can take an, any object. It has an API uh, or, or other post, uh, makes easy post mechanism and push the content to your server or your application to do whatever you like to, uh, want to do with it. The other th important thing is that not only objects, objects can push information outside, but they can also receive uh, information. So every object has an email address. So even your shoes can have an email address. Uh, and people can send messages to your, to, your, uh, to your objects, which made them contextual. So you're not receiving information on your PC on one side, and the related object is uh, somewhere else, and you're receiving uh, the message in a completely different uh, environment. So uh, for instance, you are at the office, you send the message to your children's book, and the next time he will read the book, he will have your, your message. So he will receive it in the exact context in which you want, to, you want him to, to have the message. So basically what we're doing is that we are, we are trying to get from a world in which you only have a handful of connected objects to a world where everything uh, is connected. A few years ago, Kevin Kelly said at the conference that he counted the number of stuff he had at home, and he came out with 8,000. And on average, we have like 8,000 pieces of stuff in our uh, Western world houses. So we have only five of them connected today to a network. The purpose of Violet is to connect the 7,995 remaining objects to the internet. Thank you very much.